Hello everybody, Lord for Life here, bringing you guys a brand new video with a special guest here, Mr. Elemental Draco, aka the Chaotic Historian. Uh, a lot of you long time guys and gals probably know about him. Uh, he, he's one of the most, uh, I'd say, long running members of the Chaotic community. I don't know what else. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so. Uh, I'm going to go to let you introduce yourself, and uh, yeah, we'll just go on with the interview from there. All right, fantastic. Well, as you already said, I am the infamous Elemental Draco 218, also known as the Chaotic Historian. I am the creator of the Dawn of the Chaotic Draco.webs.com website. Um, I am also responsible for the archives of a lot of Now or Never Girls and Gorks and Draco Head merchandise, as well as information. Uh, and there's pretty much, well, I'm going to rephrase that. We pretty much know everything that there is to know about Now and Never, with some exceptions. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought that it would be fun to bring you on to talk a little bit about Chaotic's history, the story, and characters, and how they've all evolved over time from Now or Never, and of course, Girls and Gorks, and into the modern uh, Chaotic. So. Uh, cause while I like to think I know a lot, I really kind of don't and you, I consider, and I think many would consider you to be an expert on pretty much everything there is to be chaotic out there. So, uh, I got the, I got a list of questions here and yeah. So what was the, hmm? I do want to go ahead and just correct one thing. I don't know everything that there is to know about chaotic, I know. but, <laughs> I, do, but I do appreciate the whole thing. <laughs> So, uh, we, we got the first question here. Uh, what was the story and lore like, and how did it change over time? So, we're talking about the, the origins, per se, like Dragon Edge, Rogue and Gorks 2 Now or Never, or just Now or Never? Yeah, the story of, like, how did they, uh, how did, what, how was the story like in the original uh, versions, and how did they change and adapt that over time, basically? Okay. Uh, well... As, as a lot of Chaotic fans know, you know, Now or Never came from a product called Draco Hits, which was released, I believe, in 1989 was when it first was marketed. Uh, it's kind of like uh, Marbles or Jacks. It was very similar to JoJo's... Uh, uh, it's either JoJo or GoGo. It's, it's something called Crazy Bones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you collected these little fantastic-looking monsters. Each had their own background story and everything. Um... Although I don't remember the storyline 100% for the original Draco Heads version, but I do recall there being a mad guy who created them, and so on, as kind of like an experiment. Um, but the main one that we need to focus on is Draco Heads 2, which is essentially the backbone of the story for Chaotic. Uh, and the reason why I'm not going to compare the first Draco Heads to the second Draco Heads is because they're a totally separate universe. Um... Draco Heads 2, or also known as Girls and Gorks, in 2000, you know, evolved into something of a card game, uh, so to speak. Uh, it was marketed towards eight-year-old kids, and the storyline for it was that there were all these wacky, crazy-looking characters that were on a spaceship called the Naren. Uh, for hardcore chaotic fans, you may recall a card called the Ring of Naren. Well, that's where the name came from. Narn was the name of their spaceship, and it was powered by what they, at the time, called the Draco Stone. It was basically a meteorite or a magic rock. Um, they were hit by a meteor, they crash-landed in a planet that they would later call Param, uh, and due to some childish indifferences, whereas the Grolovi, which would be later known as the Overworlders, and the Gorkovi, which would later be known as the Underworlders, they could not see eye-to-eye, -eye, so the Overworlders wanted to pull up above ground and just like kind of have fun instead of looking for the power source whereas the underworlders were more headstrong and wanted to go below and explore the caverns because that's where they believed the stone itself had fallen. Um, within that mix of that storyline it also mentions that there was a level of radiation emitted by the crash which created um, mutations of character which is where the character's twin head came from. Tasm and Yikes are literally a creation of themselves. Uh, and pretty much the list continues. There's a lot of interesting stories for a lot of these characters. And Girls and Gorks, I believe, no, correction, I believe, I know, features 41 characters total. Uh, Twinhead basically being two and one, so he became number 41. Mm -hmm. um, within that evolutionary process, Girls and Gorks would, in 2001, be changed over to uh, Chaotic Now or Never. 
Uh, I forget exactly who the leads of the project were, but what I do know is that in 2001, when they decided to change this over, they kept a lot of the original characters. And there were some people that, you know, I've had the pleasure of speaking to, like Carlos D'Alto or Merlin Mann, who drew these original character concepts and these drafts and stuff, and they ventured off into what later became Chaotic, which was at that time owned by Draco Company LTD or Draco Company Limited. Um, because at this point they were trying to market this game to a, a somewhat higher audience, they decided to change the aspects of the game itself. Um, but without delving too much into it, I'm just going to simply say that they were marketing towards you know at least 12 and up instead of 8 and up at this point. Uh, it was during the rise of you know Pokemon and Digimon, which also had their own trading card games. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was on the rise. Monster Rancher had their own video game franchise. It was essentially a cash grab that was marketed to a smaller you know country, you know, or you know Scandinavia essentially, which it's not really that small, but I guess at the time you would kind of consider it that. Um, so the storyline for Now or Never was slightly different from the original but it still implied that these characters had inhabited this world called Param. They did crash land on a, play, uh, on a spaceship called the Narn, and instead of it being called the Draco Stone, it was called the, uh, the Chaos Rock. What made this story a lot more different than the Girls and Gorks concept is that you had two human boys. Tom, who was a 13-year-old adolescent, and Kazdan, who was a 14-year-old adolescent, and predominantly a bully. Um, in a beta version, they mentioned that the secondary ring that one of these boys found was called a Thala, but I have never found any actual information that supported it in the original storyline. I'll talk about the beta later. Um, within this whole aspect, you know, the story con continues within the cards themselves. Each card telling a story, some group of cards telling a whole story, you know, conjoining lifestyles and ways of uh, ways of, of of agricultural advancement. You know, a whole bunch of things. So, like, when they came out with Now or Never, they did something that another card game never did. They decided to expand it into a world beyond the game itself, so that way you could become immersed in its story. And to to end this part, in two thousand and or 2005, don't quote me on the year, but I know it was around that time because that's when we would later get the, the promos for the Chaotic that we know today. But it was either in 2004 or 2005, Carlos D'Alto and uh, Mer uh, not Mer Martin Ruff decided that they were going to take this product and they were going to sell it. And that's when they ended up selling it to Brian Gannon, well, the company that he worked for. And they made this contract, okay? So Chaotic was eventually going to become something bigger and more broad, but it wasn't exactly going to change a whole lot. And that's where we got the beta version. A lot of you guys may recall a website called chaoticusa.com slash mainmovie.swf. That was a shockwave file. It was basically a test sample for, for an advertisement to show off the cards, the new art, you know, gameplay mechanics, all of that. In fact, there was a beta for that, and they used a lot of those templates, a lot of those images, in the 2006 chaoticgame.com beta that a lot of people had the pleasure of playing. Everybody remembers those infamous leaked photos. They were beautiful. There were some names that were on there. For example, the picture of Ario, and instead of it saying Ario, it says uh, Sergeant Schultzman. That was actually the name for the original Tardrek. I actually have one of those cards. Really crappy artwork, but yet still beautiful when it's on right. Uh, we would not really get to see a whole lot of this beta. We did not at, this, at that time know that it was in fact a beta. The only reason why I do know that it's a beta is because I came in contact with, with a woman. I do wish I could remember her name. Her website is now down, but she basically had this like portfolio of every product she worked on, from Chaotix, Belisara, and so on. And one of those images that she gave me, which I'll supply you with this image for future editing, she gave me uh, a released image of the original Slurk, which was an evolved form of the character Bear. Story stays the same, design is different, still equally beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, to end that, the American version, that story of course would later change to where it was basically an online game or a virtual game or some... What's the best way to describe this? It's basically real life, but on a virtual plane, if that makes sense. 
I don't really have to explain too much. Y'all guys know where I'm going with this. Um, the only difference in that is rather than them being rivals, Kaz and Tom actually are best friends, and they venture into this world where they collect codes and they advance in, in playing fields and, you know, they become one with the world of Paro, and they go on these amazing adventures. And it's just, it's a beautiful concept. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, so um, next up, uh, I, you kind of touched on it before, but what were the characters like and how did they change? Was there any uh, particular uh, decisions that were kind of controversial or how, how did they adapt things as time went on? Well, girls, like I said, Girls and Gorks was, had evolved into AI now or never. Mm-hmm. They did keep a lot of the original characters for the first booster set of Now or Never. The problem with Now or Never was that they could not market it accordingly to the way that society itself was changing because we basically had a struggle of what was known as the dot-com bubble in 2000, 2001, the same year this game was basically taking off. You know, and there was a lot of marketing issues, there was a lot of, you know, sociological issues, a lot of, you know, shows and games and, and children's toys were evolving because this was a height of the, the height of technology. Um, so during the first production of the Now or Never booster set, they made some very controversial decisions with particular characters. Uh, for example, uh, there was a character called Mao, who was basically a whiny Asian guy. He was related to Takinom. Uh, in the second set, they would revision Takinom, and they would also change her story to where she was actually related to Bodil instead of Mao. They got rid of Mao entirely. Uh, there was another character, There were actually there were a variety of characters that they specifically pinpointed um, because they wanted to kind of make them hip and hype for like younger audiences, so they kind of incorporated like musical aspects to them. For example, Screamer was a hardcore like rock screamo kind of guy. Uh, there was one character marketed towards females called Lumbo Lava, who later becomes Skipper, but she was marketed as this like punk rock emo goth chick, okay? But the biggest thing of all that made it a problem for them was Skjald. Skjald was a guy who really, really loved rap music, but the problem was his appearance. He basically looked like a raisin, but it was implied that he was black. He had purple dreads, black skin. So there was that racial aspect in there that a lot of people had problems with, the adults at least. The kids, on the other hand, you know what? They're kids. They're not really going to pay too much attention to this. But it wasn't very long before they changed that into the basic edition, which is the second edition of Now or Never, where they changed a lot of the character designs. They kept some stories, and they got rid of characters that they didn't need, especially the controversial ones. So <laughs> this issue where they were trying to re evolutionize revolutionize, excuse me, revolutionize the, the second set, they created better art, they added more in-depth stories, they left hints at other future tribes, like the character Katarin mentioned the Alma Pedimum Oasis, where, which was the first mention of the Mepedians, or an implication that the Mepedians would later be a thing. Um, they even mentioned on a character named Hippo, who would later, later become Mesmar, mm-hmm. uh, that he dives deep into the seas of Parham, and he's one of the only few that has seen the deep ones and lived to tell about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of stretched that part a little too much. They, that last part of living to tell the tale, that's not in this card, but he is one of the only ones that have seen it. Mm-hmm. We'll post that so that way you can correct me. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. But um, this second set got rid of all the controversial everything. You feel me? Uh, they even revisioned Tom and Kazden's artwork to look less cartoonish and looking more like something intimidating, something that would look cool to kids. Personally, I'm a fan of the second set. I think they did a very good job. They created a beautiful atmosphere, but even then it was not enough for them. They would later come out with the Rage Club, which was the third and final set. I have not seen all of the Rage cards. I've seen every card from the first to second set, but I've never seen you know, every card from Rage. 
Rage features the Lepedians, the Danians, and the Deep Ones, and it also mentions a treaty, truce, implications of clone monsters, implications of spirit land monsters, implications of frozen. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, this last set was going to venture into the biggest storyline concept of all, and it never got to take off. It was actually greenlit, but short-lived after it had been, been greenlit. Um, that's later around the time where Martin Ruffin, you know, decided, hey, we're going to sell this product. We're going to market it to a different company. We're going to take it halfway across the world. We're going to make it bigger, better, because this is not working out. Our sales are not doing what they need to do. It's just not working. So that's essentially what they did. Now, the interesting thing about that third set, however, is that yet again, they changed some character designs. Interest is a prime example. She was a new, a new character that was featured in it, but she's not the interest that we all know today. She's not the interest that we knew on the beta version of Now or Never that was featured on Chaotic USA. In fact, she was a slender, somewhat grotesque-looking black feline. You know, that beta, which over-sexualized her, in a sense, was not her original concept. Um, they kept a lot of the storylines the same, but they also added some violent aspects, which also implied that certain characters were forced into a war, that other characters were fighting amongst each other, that other characters were becoming more violent, that they were becoming this and becoming that. And personally, I think it was a great move had they stuck with it. But that's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you kind of touched on it, but you mentioned the Deep Ones, which of course we would later know as the Marillions and... By the way, fun fact, the Deep Ones, they get their name from a uh, species in the Lovecraft mythos, better known as the Cthulhu mythos. Uh, something that even you didn't know <laughs> when I told you about that earlier. Uh, but uh, you also mentioned the... Huh? You learn something new every day. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> Oh, you're fine. Uh, but you briefly mentioned the Frozen and the Spirit Lands. Now, we got to see a bit of the Spirit Lands in the Chaotic TV show... But the Frozen were only ever hinted at, and heck, they aren't even directly mentioned until the uh, Chaotic Ultimate Guides of To All Things Chaotic book. Uh, what can you tell us kind of a bit about the Frozen and Spiritlands? Well, uh, we'll go ahead and touch bases on the Frozen first, because it's the one that everybody has known about for the longest time. I'm actually one of, the, I'm one of three people that happened to mention them, to be honest with you. Um, I first learned about the Frozen not through Now or Never, but from a kid that was on 4Kids TV. He was in the forums and he was talking about it. Uh, I, of course, decided to start digging, and I eventually found all this, you know, information. Um, but the Frozen was implied that they were fox-like characters. Uh, that Henya Iha was the name of the leader, which also happened to be a female, and that is actually a weapon card that was featured within the gameplay mechanics of the third set. Whereas also there was the Spectral Glasses and the Udu, which were two weapon cards that you needed if you were going to fight any of the Mopedians that were invisible or the Deep Ones that were basically undersea warriors, I guess would be the best definition. Mm -hmm. So like you couldn't even play against the person who had that those cards if you didn't have that weapon card automatically. But that's deviating. So the Frozen... They never, as far as I know, never got featured into the Rage set. I'm still missing about 100 cards out of the collection, and I have over half of that collection as we, as we speak. Uh, that's actually sitting in this lovely binder right here. Ignore the fact that it says keyboarding because, you know, amateur coding. But, I'm not going to tell you about that. So, we, we do know that this was in fact supposed to be a tribe. We do know that this was supposed to be a race of beings that lived in the icy glacier or the icy, you know, or the glacier, glacier plain. <laughs> yeah, it was called icy glacier. So, like, I'm trying to get that correct there. Whereas glacier plains, you know, they it would hint at frozen characters within the ice and everything with the card art, which was beautiful. So it sparked a lot of fan theories. However, we would never really get to see them. So, there's not really much to say about the frozen, other than the fact that we do know that they did in fact exist within the universe, and they were supposed to be implied. But the closest thing that we actually got to the Frozen, and this is 
this is not confirmed. This is also, again, an opinion. The closest thing that we got to the Frozen were the, um, those white, the white cards for the, the, the conclusion. Yeah, um, the generic creatures from uh, Perks or Chasm. Uh, yep, there you go, the generic characters. Because, I mean, if you look at them, you have Krabaskar, who is a woolly mammoth. You got Smilden and Ursus, which are, you know, prehistoric sabertooths and a bear. You know, and you also have these nomadic cavemen, like Promax. And then you have Ariac, which was basically a, uh, a, a rodent who would never become an actual, you know, card, but was featured in the show along with Glepton. And those are also, you know, mammalian characters, which would be featured in the middle of an Ice Age. So that's probably the, the closest that we ever really got to the Frozen, if you want to count them. I just can't confirm that they were original Frozen characters. However, uh, we were going to talk about Spiritlands. So let me go ahead and bring that up. The Spiritlands is indeed a thing. It was also featured in the original game. There were location cards dedicated to that. Um, but we had characters like Bareth Beyond, and Tangeth Tobor, who were from the spirit land of, of war, also known as Bako, uh, whereas Bareth was for, I believe it was Vengeance, and I believe uh, Tangeth was for just, like, just war. Mm -hmm. So we also had other characters that were not necessarily from the spirit lands, but their storylines were, you know, implied that they were. Like uh, Hotamu or Eaglelin, for example. Well, no, I don't think it was Eaglelin. Let me. Uh... So uh, we we couldn't find the card uh, that he was wanting to talk about. So I, I pretty much uh, have gone through all my questions. I got one more. Uh, how what how did uh, everything kind of go with the modernization? Uh, how do you think like uh, with the Ooh. modernization of the chaotic? Uh, well, I, I think that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, nothing. I, I don't. I don't know where I was going with that question. <laughs> it's it's I'll, I'll miss it to the best of my ability. Okay. Uh -huh. I think with the modernization of the current chaotic, which is this lovely beauty that we have here, uh, ignore the fact that it's the game that everybody hates. But I think that with the way that they took the current version, I think it's a beautiful and noble concept. Okay. Because this isn't just the evolution of a small product that began in a small town in the middle of Denmark. This is something that went worldwide and affected a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. You know, you've created, or, or these, these people that created this, you know, TC Digital, granted, nobody really likes them, for kids entertainment who had a part in it, they created a universe that kids could fall in love with. You know, the gameplay is not hard. It's easy to battle people halfway across the world with a click of a button. That is revolutionary, okay? And with the trading card game industry being as low as it is at this point, that was one hell of a leap. It was a smart uh, marketing plan, in my opinion. Um, I do have to say that, for me personally, Chaotic itself has pretty much saved my life. It did as a kid, at least, because I was a very lonely child. I'm not going to delve too much into that, but what I'll say is that it gave me a reason to socialize, to find a reason to lose myself in something else to get my mind off the things I was going through as a child. I met great people. I'm still in contact with those people today. I had the pleasure of learning a wonderful game that was so fun that I would kill hours on it every day. And with the probability of it coming back, that means we can inspire more children the way that they did when I was 16 years old. You know, I'm 27 years old now. That's how long it's been. It's almost 12 years since the fall of the audit. That is so depressing. Mm -hmm. And I hope that when they do this, that they're not going to pick a crappy company like they did with Full Kids Entertainment. Mm -hmm. But we can't guarantee everything. I know that Brian Gannon mentioned the probability of a virtual reality concept, which I think is amazing because that would get me to buy a virtual reality set. You know, <laughs> but, um, I will be in this room in my little casting couch, no jokes. You know, just sitting here like punching in the air, just playing that game if it's a real thing. You know, but we need to kind of like hype it up for other people because we, the true fans, the people that have been with the game from the very beginning, we kind of have a homage to this thing. Um, and even if it doesn't take off, at least we can say that we tried. 
Chaotic has risen from the ashes not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. Okay? And even despite that, you still have people that are picking through the remains, who are still enjoying the game, who are still amassing communities, who are still creating fan productions, who are still trying to make this a thing. And I think that's poetic. I think that's the reason why they're pushing so hard for something like this. You know, Brian Gannon and his crew. So, I think that I think the game itself was revolutionary, and I think that it's definitely something that we need. Uh, I think it's just something that we that we really need in today society, so to speak. Yeah, I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know how you feel. I, I share a lot of the same sentiments, and it really does feel like it's been forever, uh, you know. And I'm hoping that chaotic picks up again. And this time it stays for a lot longer. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. No. I, I, I do, I do want to say one, one more thing, because mm-hmm. uh, I remember in 2007 when I created the Dawn of the Chaotic Rico dot, you know, dot webs, dot com website, mm-hmm. I, I got a personalized email from a guy named Chris Evans. He was one of the original workers at TC Digital. Mm-hmm. He, um, he actually, I believe, went on to work with Sony Entertainment at, uh, at one point. Mm-hmm. Well, I got an email from him during that time, and he was so impressed by it that he actually sent me my, my first uh, booster pack from Dawn of Param. I had two booster packs. Oh, wow. And the one of the first cards that I got was a Badab and a Surrey. And mm-hmm. I'm over through and through to the end. Okay? I remember getting the T-shirt, the window cleaning. I'll actually probably show those again if we uh, do a second video. Mm-hmm. That would be great. And soon we'll have that letter sitting around here. You know, um, it's people like that who just reach out to their fans for no real reason, but just because they're impressed or drawn in by something that their fans have expressed. Mm -hmm. I think that's the kind of company that they need to have. And if they Mm -hmm. do, Chaotic is going to go far. It's going to go so much further than what it had before. Yeah, and unless I'm mistaken, Chris Evans is uh, better known to everybody as Chaotic Blargers. He was the head of uh, the forums, and he's still very active on Twitter, and he occasionally hops on to Chaotic Discord just to chat with people. So I think they've been doing a really good job. I don't know if he's doing anything with the uh, revival of Chaotic at the moment, but I know he's expressed uh, interest in getting back with Ganon and everything, so I hope I hope that happens. <laughs> You know, I actually have a friend who worked on the art piece in the His name is Stone Paralis, so I kind of want to give a shout-out to him mm-hmm. because he's a really great guy. Some of his artwork is just to die for. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Um, I also want to give a shout-out to Merlin Mann because he's the reason why I have a lot of the information that I have on the original and whenever. And a special shout-out to Carlos Alto because he's responsible for giving me the uh, Chaotic Now or Never theme song that everybody has found on YouTube. I mean, I didn't post the YouTube video, but I did send it to a lot of people at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, and last but not least, I definitely want to give a shout out to uh, Brian C. Gannon. Thank you. Seriously, for everything. If anybody, by the way, wants to like follow me on, it, on, on anything, um, I do have Instagram. I have a meme page, but a lot of it's offensive. <laughs> if you're like, or you could just you know check out my website every once in a while, you know, just see whatever is new. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, and I'll definitely leave links to your uh, social media and your website down below. Uh, and I know we were talking about doing a second video, talking about how the mechanics and everything changed as time went on. So if you guys want to see that, let us know down in the comments. And uh, thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Uh, do you want to say I anything? Do. Oh. <laughs> I do have one thing to say. I am also selling a limited edition bathwater. Buy it. Link in the inbox. I'm going to break the q and live from my mama's basement. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. See you all later. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you all for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider rating, commenting, and subscribing to my channel. It all goes a long way to helping out me and my channel. Uh, And also, if you do, please consider following me on social media, as well as also checking out my other channels. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Peace out.